I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and I have a confession to make. Shock horror, I am a concrete cowboy. I might not be wearing Iron Williams right now, but you know there's a couple of pairs in the cupboard at home. And that's why this new Ford Ranger Platinum is the best possible ute for me, or at least it's very much up there with the likes of the Volkswagen Amarok Aventura. This is a vehicle that lets you have all the benefits of a dual cab with very few of the downsides because more or less the Ranger Platinum is an Everest Platinum rebodied into a ute. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you just how comfortable that can make life in a dual cab. Of course, the Ranger Platinum isn't perfect, and I'll also point out the things that it doesn't get so right. But also, just like so many misunderstood concrete cowboys out there, the Ranger Platinum's talents actually do run more than just skin deep. Ford engineers have created some excellent parts for this car, which make life a lot easier, particularly if you need to carry loads. And I'm gonna show you all about that system in today's video as well. But before we get started, hit subscribe down below. Chasing Cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. But before we jump inside the Ranger Platinum's luxurious interior, I wanna go around the vehicle and show you some of its tricks. First of all is the engine. You can only get the Platinum with the three liter V6 diesel, which is the engine to go for in the Ranger, even though the four cylinder bi-turbo is actually pretty good. We've got 184 kilowatts of power here, 600 Newton meters of torque. So this is only bested by the Ranger Raptors three liter twin turbo petrol V6. But while that engine has more power and does promise quite a significant performance gain for zero to 100. Its fuel consumption is about two times that of the V6 diesel in our real world testing. So all of that actually makes the V6 diesel probably a superior power plant for most people and a good fit for a platinum type of vehicle. You will notice the Ranger Platinum on the road if you are a bit of a Ranger spotter, and that's because it wears a lot more bright work. Just in case you miss it, it does have platinum written out here on the bonnet. I'd probably find a bit of dental floss for that bit, but it does make clear what the car is at least. You've also then got lots of silver accenting across the grille, the C-clamp headlights, and I really like the front end of this ute as a whole. You do have these dark black gloss strakes through the grille, which is different to like the gray detailing you get on a wild track, and Matrix LED headlights are standard. And not only are they really good headlights, they also look better than the standard LED units you get in a wild track that hasn't been optioned up to Matrix spec. Moving our way down the side of the car, the next thing you'll notice are the 20 inch machine face alloys on the Platinum, really nice looking wheel. And we've also got the Goodyear Wrangler Territory Highway Terrain tire, similar to what you find on a top end Everest, but actually because the alloys are a little bit smaller on the Ranger Platinum compared to the Everest Platinum, you actually are getting a slight ride quality improvement with this vehicle, at least at the front end, not so much at the leaf sprung rear end. Further down, you got your V6 badge on the side, We've got body colored mirrors here. I think maybe Ford could have gone for like a matte silver mirror. Big side steps. We'll come back to these roof rails in just a sec because they do something pretty cool. You do get bright work around the window line, the only range of spec to get that. And then as we come past the tray, you will notice the standard fit automatic retracting tonneau cover. And at the back of the ute, you've got nice big silver badges for your full drive system and your platinum, plus a matte silver bar at the rear too. The color on this vehicle is also unique to the Ranger Platinum. It's Equinox Bronze, which is shared with the Everest Platinum. It's kind of like a dark brown, purple color. It's definitely distinctive. Uh, I do also think that the Sedona Orange, like a deep orange that is available for the Platinum is a good looking paint too. Now, look at this. Damn tailgate. Wow, that is a quick response to feedback because we have been criticizing the Ranger for an undamped tailgate for some time. Access up into the tray is easy because we still have the side step. And what I want to show you is this, the flexible rack system, which you can operate by yourself, even if it is a bit slicker with two people, which we'll also show you. And then what we have here is a crossbar, which uh, you can <coughs> lift up, which is going to help you fit things like surfboards and other long loads. The tray is lined, it does have a, a button for the power tonneau and also a 12 volt socket. But I now wanna come up here to the roof rails on the Ranger because a bit like a Subaru Outback, they are packing a special feature, which is crossbars that are super easy 
to get installed by yourself. There we go. So these just clip in with a load limit of 80 kilos. And then all of a sudden we've gone from a very slick looking ute with those running roof rails to a full setup here with three crossbars. It's going to let you carry a longer load. It looks completely OEM because it is completely OEM and it avoids the sort of tacky, nasty aftermarket look of a bunch of other rack systems out there. So this is all Ford Australia is doing. They added it to the Ranger project and I think it's turned out really well. Now you can get it on some other specs of Ranger. You can get it on the Wildtrak X for instance, but I think it really elevates the Platinum's capabilities beyond just being kind of a luxurious town ute in order to being able to do some pretty practical stuff as well. If the exterior of the Ranger Platinum looks clean and handsome and upmarket and the flexible rack is pretty impressive, the interior is where the Ranger Platinum, I reckon, is going to win quite a lot of sales when people sit in this vehicle in the dealership, partially because it doesn't really have a Ranger interior. Everything you're looking at here is actually taken from the Everest Platinum. This is not a Ranger dashboard. A Ranger dash has open storage over here, whereas the Ranger Platinum has this faux leather padding, closed in double glove box and completely different seats, which I'll come back to in a second. But while these are subtle differences rather than a complete restyle compared to something like a Ranger Wildtrak, it actually does make quite a difference. When you're sitting in the vehicle in traffic and you're just looking around the dashboard, it feels suitably upmarket. And it probably should because this car, or use I should say, costs 85 grand drive away, which is definitely not cheap for a Ford Ranger. So what does it do to get you there? Well, it starts with a steering wheel that is upholstered in really soft leather compared to the rough leather you get in every other Ford Ranger. It does have a contrast white stitch, which looks great. And you've got shortcut buttons for your adaptive cruise and lane keep and multimedia. Then you're looking through at a 12 inch digital instrument cluster which is actually standard on most Volkswagen Amarok variants, but on the Ranger is quite few and far between. It's only this Platinum and the Raptor that get the 12-inch screen. And while it is big, clear, and crisp, I do think Ford could take it further. You can't put a map in there, for instance. You can't put your album artwork in the center. So you kind of have all of this real estate, but not a huge amount of ability to customize the screen, which feels like a bit of a lost opportunity. Casting our gaze over here, we've got the full 12 inch vertical touchscreen, which again is reserved only for the top end sort of ranges. You can't get it in the Sport, for instance, which is about nine grand cheaper than this vehicle. It's a good screen. You've got physical climate controls and a volume dial beneath it. And on the screen itself, the Ford software is reasonably intuitive and you also get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That then pairs to the Ranger's B&O stereo, which is standard in the Platinum and is actually really good. That's quite a surprise to me, but it's clear, it's punchy, it's loud, and your music doesn't get distorted. You also get simulated wood trim underneath this double glove box, which opens like so. And again, even though the wood isn't real, it does work to good visual effect. And the dashboard is really nicely lifted in this car compared to a wild track, which if I'm completely honest, feels a little bit undercooked in the cabin. I think the Ranger wild track looks cool outside, but the cabin doesn't quite feel doesn't quite feel up to its premium price, but here spending a little bit more in the Platinum, it's a major lift in perceived luxuriousness. Now onto the seats. Again, they're not Ranger seats. They're actually from the Everest. Now that's a subtle difference because there are heaps of family relations between these two vehicles, but the seat is a different bolstering shape and it's a much softer leather with heating and cooling plus driver's memory. Now the range of electric adjustment could still be a bit better. I wish it had a, a thigh extender. There's not enough thigh support for me in this vehicle. And the bolstering is a little bit loose, particularly when the Ranger has decent handling. You kind of wish you were being held in a bit more in the corners and there's no up down lumbar. Now, why am I splitting hairs and being a nitpicker? Well, because for so many years, basically all dual cabs were crap. Now that there's a few at the top of the segment that are doing things really right, Ranger, Amarok, and a few others, we have to nitpick so that the segment keeps improving. Now these seats just need to become a little bit more supportive and comfortable. And I would suggest that Ford look to Volkswagen because using the same toolkit, the Amarok seats are much more comfortable for long drives. Lastly, materials are pretty soft and pretty nice around the cabin, to be honest and storage is decent. Big cup holders, wireless charging that actually works, albeit kind of slowly, and a big bin between the seats. You also get USB-A and USB-C.
One thing I should have mentioned a second ago when I was up front, but I can actually see them now, is the pre-wiring for auxiliary switches in the roof of the Ranger. A nice feature, you don't get that on the Amarok, uh, it must be said, but what there isn't in any Ranger or Amarok is a sunroof. And I really think a sunroof would have added another touch of class to this vehicle. You can get it on the Everest, but the Everest has a completely different roof to the Ranger. It's just a bit of a shame Ford hasn't spent the money to develop a sunroof for this top end U. But anyway, the back seat. So for myself at six foot, there's enough room. Legroom is good. Headroom is absolutely very good. And tow room is just about enough for me. Now the seat base could be angled a little bit higher, but I technically have enough support back here. I'm okay. Air vents are good. We've got two more USB-C ports here in the back. You also get a center armrest, which I seem to always struggle to put down in ranges, but you just have to lift it up before you try and pull it out and dislodge the entire rear seat. But you do have cup holders. It's a nice armrest, but even 85 grand drive away, still hard plastic up here on this door, but you do get a softer armrest if anyone cares about that stuff. Now, you do get rear airbags as well across the entire Ranger dual cab lineup, which is good because a lot of people use these vehicles now as family transport. And I'll put a shot in here of the baby seat configuration in this vehicle. You do have to put this passenger seat forward a bit for a rear facing infant seat because there's decent leg room up front that doesn't compromise your riding position too much. So what is a Ranger Platinum gonna cost you to run? Well, first of all, there's the purchase price, which is higher than a Wild Track or a Wild Track X, but considerably lower than a Raptor, but it's still within the territory of half reasonable given how nice that interior is. The difficulty is actually getting hands on one because deliveries are very slow. The Platinum was supposed to get here a while ago. It's only just dropped in Australia and I'm talking to you in early August, 2023. The culprits, the matrix LED headlights, still difficult, still a little bit supply constrained, that part, but we should see deliveries get a little bit better. What about once you've taken delivery? Well, servicing the first five years, 75,000 Ks is capped at $1,726. The fuel economy from the V6, it isn't too bad. On the highway, you'll get in the eights. Our touring economy using country roads was 9.3 liters per 100 kilometers and urban you'll get sort of 10 to 11 without trying too hard, all of which is actually quite reasonable for the amount of power on offer. And lastly, well actually not lastly, the warranty is five years with unlimited kilometers. And now finally, when it comes to insurance in the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer spent $1,251 to comprehensively insure a new Ford Ranger. Everybody's situation varies and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account, like where you live, your driving history, and how you garage the vehicle. So what is the Ranger Platinum like to drive? With all these accoutrements on top, does the driving experience let this ute down at what is admittedly a high price? Well, the short answer is nah, not really. Not if you go into the Ranger Platinum understanding what a dual cab ute is like to drive. It is not like an SUV to drive. And anybody that claims that a Ranger or an Amarok or a Hilux or any other dual cab is car-like or SUV-like is kind of pulling the wool over your eyes a bit. That said, there are grades of distinction within the dual cab segment and the Ranger is definitely at the very top along with the Amarok. And if you're a subscriber or if you're interested, you can find the uh, comparison that I've done between the Ranger and Amarok on the Chasing Cars channel where I basically distill that the Amarok has gone after a more sporty, stiffer character in its suspension, which does allow it to achieve higher in terms of handling and body control. Whereas the Ranger is more laid back and more softly sprung, which ultimately limits its handling capability at the top end, but may suit people that want that uber plush ride around town, at least uber plush as far as you can go in a leaf sprung dual cab ute, which is what we have here. Because at the end of the day, Ford has obviously decided that this Ranger Platinum still needs to be capable of doing heavy duty work. So they haven't done anything like gone to coil springs at the rear, like in the Everest. We still have the heavy duty leaf sprung rear suspension, which retains high payload and the three and a half ton towing capacity of the other diesel Rangers. So really what I'm trying to say is that ride quality and ride comfort is good for a ute, 
but still off the pace of something like an SUV. But it's actually not far off the Everest, which is a bit of a surprise given the rear end is theoretically a lot more comfortable on an Everest than on a Ranger. And as far as utes go, the Ranger is just far and above most of the class in terms of quietness, refinement, body control and ride quality. It's really only able to be challenged right now by its platform sharing cousin, the Volkswagen Amarok. But that being said, if what you want is a luxe ute, I think you'll notice that the Ranger Platinum rides a little better than the Amarok Aventura, which is definitely more tuned to be like a sporty GT ute, which is definitely in the Amarok's character, so there's nothing wrong with that. But the Ranger Platinum actually does do the daily duty sort of stuff a bit more comfortably than an Amarok Aventura. In the Amarok lineup, it's actually the Panamericana, which rides the best by far on 18s. But what Ford has been able to do is deliver a Ranger Platinum on 20 inch wheels, so a significantly larger alloy, but which still has nicely insulated ride for a dual cab. And I think that's really quite an achievement. So I took this car for a really grand drive yesterday in town on the motorway and on some of my favorite country roads here in New South Wales. And it's a product that acquits it itself really well up until about eight tenths of driving effort. On a really broken country B road, you start to notice that things fall apart a little bit at the rear end and your compliance over bumps, complicated mid corner bumps and things like that is a little bit limited. But in almost every other driving situation, the Ranger Platinum is a quiet, cosseting, comfortable vehicle. And it's the kind of ute that if you're not a ute person and you've never liked utes, you actually find yourself starting to become quite convinced because it looks great and it's got a nice luxurious cabin, lovely touch points including this soft steering wheel and cooled seats and, and things like that and solid infotainment and a good stereo. And it's not loud or agricultural at all really. It's a significant improvement, the current Ranger over that sort of stuff and the Platinum is the best of the bunch in a lot of ways even if the Raptor just goes to the next step of ride quality thanks to its bespoke suspension. Engine wise, We've got the trusty three liter turbo diesel V6 here, which had lots of mods before it was placed into the Ranger. So long-term reliability, I don't have my crystal ball on me, but obviously the jury will be out until these vehicles are at least a few years old. But the stats are good, 184 kilowatts of power, 600 newton meters of torque, pop out performance figures up on screen here. The disappointment is actually in the other direction, the braking, which is just too weak on the T6.2 Ranger lineup. And the Amarok is also affected by that. We do have disc brakes at the rear, but it's the porky weight of the vehicle, which means that stopping distances are not as good as we would hope for, for a vehicle near the top of the segment in other metrics. As we're sitting here, this range of Platinum is about 23.50 kilos before we get into it. With me and Eddie on board, we're up around that two and a half ton mark, which is a lot of weight to be bringing to a stop very quickly. The 10 speed auto, it's a good match for the powertrain. It does tend to get a little bit better as you start putting the Ks on the vehicle. It can be a bit jerky for the first couple of thousand Ks, but I find that does go away. No paddle shifters on the wheel though, which would be a nice addition. Now in terms of safety, we do have kind of rudimentary lane keeping, not as strong as I would like. It doesn't sort of hold the center of the lane, but the adaptive cruise is strong. The blind spot monitoring works well, and we do have AEB in this vehicle, including in the reversing direction as well. So that is the Ford Ranger Platinum. This is a really good dual cab ute, and you can see that this is basically the pinnacle of Ford's effort to get the new T6.2 Ranger really right. There's no doubt that the Raptor is a seriously entertaining product and a very, very desirable ute. But I actually think in a lot of ways, the Ranger Platinum is the smarter vehicle. You've got the frugal three liter diesel V6, which still has heaps of punch. You've got that lovely, comfortable interior at a premium over a sport or a wild track that isn't all that crazy, in my opinion. You've got the flexible rack. It's quite a complete ute. Now this is not sponsored by Ford or commercial content in any way. It's just my honest opinion about the Ranger Platinum. And I think as a response to a vehicle like an Amarok Aventura, it's very interesting in that now Ford buyers can go for something a little bit more premium, a little bit more luxurious without having to go to Volkswagen. But there are shortcomings. The seats 
are just not comfortable or supportive enough, even though they are an improvement over the standard Ranger seat. And I do think Ford could have considered something, even something like a coil sprung rear end for the Ranger Platinum to enhance ride comfort, obviously at the expense of being able to carry heavy loads because it doesn't have that last degree of compliance that you are getting from something like an Amarok Panamericana or a big pickup from the class above like an F-150 or a Ram. Those are my opinions. Please let me know down below what you think of the Ranger Platinum. While you're there, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell if you found all of this useful. And as always, thank you for watching Chasing Cars.